Um, so the first question that we would like to ask is, there's been, your journey has been filled with various experiences from spiritual to business to lessons to um, everything that has come up for you in, in momentum of inner callings and inner understandings. But in spite of that, if you could go back and alter one thing in your life journey, what would that be? There would be a couple. Uh, one would be paying more attention to health. And second, recognize one's fears and fight them, articulate them better and seek help in that. It's still a journey for me. I love how through the talk you have said, this is still a journey for me and I'm still working towards it's it. It's absolutely so the truth. <laughs> it's inspiring. But speaking of truth, uh, we all know Gandhiji's autobiography was titled My Story of, Story of My Experiments with Truth. And a large part of your most recent project, which is also titled Truth Talks, uh, dives into the experiments of truth with these different people that have come uh, in conversation on Truth Talks. With that, what does truth mean to you and what has been your experiments with truth? It's uh, being true to oneself. I cannot speak the truth that I do not know. I cannot sense it. I cannot feel it. I... So truth, what I know to be truth. So, you know, Guruji Goenkaji had this beautiful saying, Bahar bhitar ek ras saral sakshya vyavahar kathani karni ek si yahi dharam kosa. That when there is an alignment between what you say and what you feel or what you do and what you feel, that's enough. So if I had a false belief, which I knew to be true or I thought to be true, and later I recognized, I think that's fine for me. Wonderful. It feels like you're actually anticipating my next question that's coming <laughs> in, in the way you're responding. Since you already recited this beautiful prayer and speaking of poetry, as you also mentioned in, in the introduction video, um, you mentioned that um, you loved to write poetry when, in, when you were in your ashram as you were studying. Can you share any poem or few lines with us which, were, which feels very alive for you in the moment? So in that journey of mine, you know, there were moments of high and moments of low. And um, uh, so one of them was a, a sense of loneliness. And it was kind of uh, very nice also. So I said, Main aur meri tanhai. And meri tanhai na todo. Mujhe akela chodo. And it went on and that uh, how beautiful this tanhai is and how the world will not be able to understand this tanhai. Mm -hmm. There was one about uh, the mountain and river and a conversation between them. I do not even remember because this is the first time anyone asked me to recite uh, my own poems, but it was about a conversation between a hill and a river that uh, hill is so proud of itself that look, you know, I'm standing so tall and the river says, you know, you stand tall in one place, doesn't matter. I'll go and meet every little guy around wherever I can. And it was a, it was a lovely conversation in my mind. And I said, okay, in my life, can I be like the river? So that was my inspiration. Wow, that's beautiful. Always flowing, just as your responses. Thank you. My next question is, what reminds you to bring love to the world of profit? Sorry, say that again, please. What reminds you to bring love in the world of profit, to the world of profit? So my own, you know, feeling of, you know, being insufficient and that how terrible it feels. I mean, it happens to me all the time, that sense of being deprived. You know, one little thing missing on your plates, one little thing missing in your wardrobe every day and how it hurts. And when you think of others, that how many deprivations they have. Oh, you've got to do something about them. And it's not only just business with your whole entity. You know, how can you reduce that sense of deprivation? And sometimes that deprivation is desperation. How people just, you know, go completely the wrong route. So if you, if you can avoid deprivation, maybe you can avoid desperation. So you can't do enough. 
Wonderful. And the last question that I would ask is, can you share a moment when you deeply felt drenched in the law of love? As I shared, you know, from my early, after I lost my mother, and then, you know, the sense of uh, my brother and my sister, I think they were uh, amazing moments. And I think, uh, you know, all these masters of mine, my father, Dr. Rushikumar, Professor Rushikumar Pandya, Mr. Murthy, all of them at different points of time have been so amazing. So, so I, I, there are millions of moments when a colleague would have come and done something so extraordinary, or when he would have proven to be so trustworthy in a crisis, standing like a rock with you. Um, my wife, you know, how can I forget her? Uh, that unquestioning loyalty, unquestioning support to all my craziness. Uh, yeah, how could I have gone away to, you know, Vipassana living? And she had no idea what was Vipassana. Ab jare ho, theke, go, please go. And how a fourth day onwards, every moment of my Vipassana, I feel grateful to her. So there are just too many eggs to count, too many people to thank. 